Hello YouTube, welcome back. This video is the second video in a series on the Greeks for options investors. In this video we're going to be learning about delta, which is one of the most important Greeks. Delta is the amount that the options price changes for a one unit change in the price of the underlying. So what we're trying to work out here is when we look at our option, we're saying how much will it change when the underlying moves by we'll say one percent now to a lot of people they think well because it's an option we'll say if it's a call option it is the right but not the obligation to buy the underlying at a pre-agreed price which is our strike price and so they would look at that and say well if the price of the underlying goes up one percent the option will move up by one percent but that's not actually the case what we find is that because our option has that payoff diagram like we've seen in some of our earlier videos, the option actually doesn't move in a linear manner with the price of the underlying. Instead, it moves slightly less. And hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you because it couldn't actually move more than the price of the underlying because the right to buy something could never move up by more than the price of the thing that you have the right to buy, right? And so it can't move up more than that and equally it has to have some relationship to it. So delta is basically a mathematical description of that relationship. So mathematically speaking, delta is the first derivative of the options price with respect to the underlying. It's typically expressed in terms of the amount an options position's value will change for a 1% move in the price of the underlying. Now these estimates of the price change are only approximate. So delta is an approximation and the reason for that is because it is a linear uh, approximation of a curved function. Okay, So an option actually has a curved payoff function and delta is a linear approximation of that. So we can think of delta as a ratio comparing the change of the price of the underlying asset to the corresponding change in the price of of the derivative. So for example, if a call option had a delta of 0.6, you'd expect the call to rise by 60 cents for every $1 rise in the price of the underlying stock. Now, delta can be viewed as well. Another way of thinking of it is the slope of the tangent line to the option value. Now, the option value line is a curved line, and so delta is the slope of that. It's, once again, as I said earlier, a linear approximation. The delta of a vanilla call option can only range between 0 and 1. And that's, uh, you know, as I explained earlier, it can't move more than the underlying, and it has to have some relationship. So it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Now, delta will be low at low spot prices relative to the strike of the option and high at high uh, spot prices relative to the strike price of the underlying. And I have a little uh, image of that up on the screen. Now, let's think a little bit about that. Why would that be the case? Well, it, let's think about an option that is way, 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 way out of the money. So we'll say if there is an option with a strike price of 100, so you have the right but not the obligation to buy the underlying at $100. But let's say the underlying is actually only trading at 50 cents, right? So it has to go up an awful, awful, awful lot in order to, to for that option to sort of become activated and, and in, in order for that option to seem likely to even pay off at all. Now, should that, now that will be a cheap option because it's so out of the money, but should the price of the underlying double, if it were to go from 50 cents to a dollar, you wouldn't actually expect the price of our option to double simply because for it to go from 50 cents all the way up to $100 is kind of far away and maybe a little bit unlikely and it's not a whole lot more likely even though it's doubled in value and is now at a dollar because it still needs to go up another $99 before it even starts to look like it's going to be profitable. So that is a way out of the, the money option and its delta is going to be quite low. So if, if the underlying doubles in value, the option probably wouldn't really move all that much in value. Now, 
Now, if we move in the opposite direction, let's think of a very deep in the money option. So we'll, we'll flip those numbers around entirely and we'll say that the, uh, the underlying is trading at $100 and there's a call option with a strike price of 50 cents on it. Well, a call option with, with that's that deep in the money almost starts to look like a, a futures contract because it would have to fall so, so much in order to not have a payoff very much like just owning the underlying, that in truth, for a 1% change in the price of the underlying, you, you'd kind of expect that option to move 1% as well. It's it's almost like owning the underlying. So so that is how delta is going to change with the moneyness of an option. So more about delta. Delta is always positive for long calls and negative for long put options and then the opposite. So if you're long a call you'll have a positive delta. If you're short a call you'll have a negative delta. If you're long a put you'll have a negative delta and if you're short a put you'll have a positive delta. Um, what that means is that the value of a call option will increase with a stock prices increase and the value of a put option will decrease if the stock price increases. Given a European call and put option for the same underlying strike price and time to maturity, so essentially identical options but one is a call, one is a put, um, with no dividend yield, the delta of the call minus the delta of the put will equal 1. This is due to put call parity. A long call plus a short put replicates a forward which has a delta equal to 1. If the delta of a call is known to be 0 0.3, you can easily calculate the delta of the corresponding put at the same strike as follows. 0 0.3 minus 1 equals minus 0 0.7. To calculate the delta of the corresponding call from the delta of a put, you can simply add 1 to the put delta as follows. Minus 0 0.7 plus 1 equals 0 0.3. So that's that. Let's talk now about the intuition of delta. Options values change in a non-linear manner with a complicated formula for precise calculations. Delta is just a quick way of determining at a given spot price how option values change for small movements in the price of the underlying over the next short period of time. Delta also tells you how long or short your portfolio is at a given point in time. You can think of the delta of an option in terms of being long or short the underlying asset. If you're long one at the money call with a delta of 0.5 and that's a call option that controls 100 shares of the underlying. If it has a delta of 0.5, it's an awful lot like being long 50 shares because if you think about it, if the underlying goes up by 1% and our our option increases by half of that amount, it's kind of like owning half as many shares owning that that option. Traders usually refer to a 0 0.6 delta call as a 60 delta call, presenting the delta as a percentage of the total number of shares represented by the options contract. This is useful as the option will, for small price changes, behave like the number of shares indicated by the delta. For example, if an American call option which covers 100 shares on a given stock has a delta of 0.3 or 30%, it will gain or lose value just like 30 shares of ABC as the stock price experiences small price movements. The total delta of a portfolio of options on the same underlying asset can be calculated by simply taking the sum of the deltas for each individual position. Since the delta of underlying asset is always 1, a trader could delta hedge the entire position in the underlying by buying or shorting the number of shares indicated by the total portfolio delta. This hedge will work for small movements in the price of the underlying. For a short amount of time and notwithstanding changes in other market conditions such as volatility and the risk-free rate. 
To learn more about Delta, take a look at my next video, which is coming out tomorrow, on Delta Neutral Portfolios. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, please hit the like button below and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Um, and also you can hit that bell button if you want to be notified in your emails. Please comment below if there's any other topics that you'd like me to cover in these videos. They're all based on my book, which is linked to in the description below. And that's all for now. Talk to you later. Bye.